Hello everybody. Today we're going to be talking about Afghanistan and the Taliban's attacks against Pakistan. Let's begin. The Taliban came to power in Afghanistan in August 2021. I made a video about that, a whole episode, and you can click on the link somewhere on the screen to watch it. And they were supported and backed by the Pakistan army and government, especially by their intelligence agencies, the ISI. And they, this was because of Pakistan thought that if Taliban took over Afghanistan, that they would in turn give support and help to Pakistan. But unfortunately, uh, that's not happened. Unfortunately for Pakistan, the Taliban seem to hate them because of various historical and current reasons. And they are working with the Pakistani Taliban to attack the Pakistan. I want to discuss what caused the Taliban to engage in this activity and what the possible solutions are. This is the Durand Line. It was made by the British when they were ruling India, landing into Central Asia, and they were worried that the Russia would attack Afghanistan and would then be able to attack India. So they decided to extend their border into Afghanistan. And they did this with the agreement of the ruler of Afghanistan at that time. Now, the problem with this border is that it divided a community of people called the Pashtuns, and that's what they're called in Afghanistan and Pakistan. In India, they are called Patans. And this caused a lot of anger and grief for the Pashtun people. And Afghanistan has not recognized at, at this line since 1949 and has constantly challenged it. And the result of that is that the line is not, prop, border is not properly uh, enforced. There's a lot of smuggling and traveling between these two countries. And now the Taliban, think that uh, this, since Pakistan will not willingly change their border, they are going to forcefully do it. This is the Pashtun territory. Here uh, we can see it's both in Afghanistan and Pakistan. In Afghanistan, it's very sporadically uh, spread out, but in Pakistan, it's more concentrated. These are the Pashtuns. This is their cloth cloth clothing. And they are farmers, warriors, and businessmen. As profession, that's their professions. Of course, they're not warriors now, but originally during medieval times, they were warriors. And even now, they're in the armies of both Afghanistan and Pakistan. Their population, global population, is 50 million. Their countries which have the largest numbers of Pashtuns are Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India. The Pashtuns in Afghanistan. 29% of all Pashtuns in the world live in Afghanistan. And 42% of guns are Pashtuns. And this is the majority, this is the largest ethnic community in Afghanistan. And some Pashtuns, not all, some Pashtuns believe that they have a greater right to Afghanistan than other ethnicities living there because they are the majority community. This is the presence of Pashtuns in Pakistan. 73% of all Pashtuns live in Pakistan and 15% of Pakistanis are Pashtuns. 
So here we can see in Pakistan, they are not a majority, they are a minority, but they have the majority of Pashtuns living with them. So it is the exact opposite situation from Afghanistan. And uh, there's been a often debate in Pakistan about the loyalty of Pashtuns to the country. Some non-Pashtuns uh, fear that the Pashtuns are secretly loyal to Afghanistan. And from what I've learned is that a majority of them are loyal to Pakistan, but they also have loyalty towards their ethnicity and have some fondness for Afghan Pashtuns. But their loyalty is with Pakistan. This is the Afghan Taliban chief, Hibatullah, Hibatullah Akhundzada. Uh, he is the one who has ordered these terrorist attacks against Pakistan and attacks against the border infrastructure. He says that they are going to forcefully remove the fencing that lies on the Durand line. He believes that there should be no borders between not only Pashtuns but Muslims as a whole. And he wants uh, Pakistan to surrender to the Taliban. This is the Pakistan Taliban chief, Mufti Noor Wali Mehsud. He is loyal to the Afghan Taliban. He comes under them, but he supports their same ideology, which is Pashtun nationalism and Islamic uh, uh, supremacy, you could say, uh, Islamism. He wants, uh, he wants sh uh, Sharia law to be implemented in Pakistan. But unfortunately for him, right now Pakistan, although an Islamic state, follows secular laws, and he believes that this is wrong for a Muslim state to be doing which is why he's working with the Afghan Taliban. There's been a big spike in terror incidents in Pakistan since the Taliban took over Afghanistan. In 2019, there were 136. And in 2021, when they took over, it was 267. And last year, it was a big rise to 361. So we can see that uh, the takeover of, the Talib of Afghanistan by the Taliban has not reduced terror in Pakistan, which is what the Pakistani government had hoped for. And we can see here that Pak provinces on the Afghan border see the biggest jump in terror-related fatalities. So Fatah and Khaib Pakhtunkhwa are the ones with, which are close to the, the Afghan border. So this shows that it is probably being done by the Taliban because Pashtuns live near the border, stay in the border states, so they would, and so since mo, uh, most of the Pakistani Taliban are Pashtuns, it is likely that they are, these terror attacks on the border states were done by the Pakistani Taliban. Pakistan has uh, communicated to the Afghan Taliban to stop these attacks. It has been begging, in fact, the Afghan Taliban to prevent the banned group, the Tehriki Taliban Pakistan, from using Afghanistan as their safe haven. However, the Taliban administration of Afghanistan still sticks to its earlier stance that the only way to resolve the TTP issue is through dialogue. They are not going to uh, force the Pakistani Taliban to surrender to the government. They are going to just allow both of them to fight while supporting the Pakistani Taliban. And Imran Khan was the prime minister when uh, the Taliban took over Af Afghanistan. He was somewhat sympathetic to the Taliban, at least that is the image that people have of him. He is more sympathetic to them than the, his successor. 
here uh, he says that Afghans uh, that uh, there must be a cooperative bilateral relationship with Afghanistan's Taliban rulers and he warned that mutual tensions could run turn his country's counterterrorism efforts into a disastrous forever war so he sees the danger and thinks that a uh, diplomatic solution with uh, the Taliban will help rather than a military conflict but uh, ruling government of Shehbaz Sharif still insists on using counterterrorism measures. So we can see that there are two different solutions proposed by the leaders in Pakistan. So what can we make out of this? We can understand that the Afghan Taliban is very, very angry with Pakistan. And there's a reason for that, because during their time when they were out of power, Pakistan's army had sometimes crossed into Afghanistan and had tried to uh, to move their border forward. And so this angered the Taliban and the Pashtuns in Afghanistan, who felt that Pakistan was trying to coerce them to join Pakistan. And also, uh, not only do the Taliban dislike Pakistan, even Taliban's opposition don't like Pakistan because Pakistan supported the Taliban. So there is no support or sympathy for Pakistan in Afghanistan. This leaves Pakistan in a very dangerous situation. Now, as I've said that there were two solutions provided by uh, the leaders of Pakistan. The opposition leader Imran Khan said that a peaceful diplomatic solution must be found, while the Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has said that the military must be used in counterism efforts to fight the Taliban, the Pakistani Taliban. And he has also said that they are willing to go into Afghanistan to attack the TTP if Afghanistan is sheltering them. Um, uh, what I think one other solution that would satisfy both parties, both Afghanistan and Pakistan, would be if they allow the Pashtuns to have a referendum to decide which country they want to join or if they want to uh, be an individual sovereign nation. If that's not uh, possible, then I think it would be just best to let this uh, border remain and uh, so that uh, the conflict ends. I don't see how the Taliban's conflict with Pakistan can help it. If, of course, if they uh, defeat Pakistan and take over some territory, then that'll help them. But uh, still, I think it would be better for them to just focus on staying within their country and supporting the Afghan people. So that's how I view this matter. I, there is, it's a very complicated issue and I don't think I have any perfect solutions. I'm just a random guy with a laptop, that's all. So, uh, yeah, I just hope that this violence ends quickly and that there can be peace once again in Afghanistan. At last, the Afghan people really, really deserve peace. I hope you liked that video. If you want to see other videos about nationalism in South Asian countries, click here. If you want to see my previous video, click here. If you want to see the sources I use for this video, click the links in the description below. Thank you for watching. Vande Mataram.